Welcome back to No Sleep Sleepover. How you doing? I'm Logan, that's Matt, um, and we're having a little virtual party with our little drinky drinks. I like you were a little Wendy Williams. You're like, how you doing? How you doing? I think I was going for Minnesota, but I think I totally missed um, that. Wendy Williams from Minnesota. There you go. Like Matt, what are you drinking? Uh, this is a Hell's Seltzer. It's a, the Hell's Kitchen official seltzer uh, by Chef Gordon Ramsay himself. And this one is called Nick a Twist. Uh, it's passion fruit, pineapple, and orange. So a lot of flavor, Ooh, which is just how I like it. So Tons of flavor. flavor, um, flavor. I'm drinking the bottom of two bottles of red wine. Um, <laughs> so, you know, a little mixing going on. Uh, they both were probably $12 total. So okay, class nothing but class over here. Hey, I personally feel like after ten bucks, all wine tastes the same, but that's just me. Agree. Uh, if you anyone know. spends like eighty dollars on a bottle of wine, um, <laughs> I, I I don't agree with you. Sorry. <laughs> I mean, here's the thing: you'd have to tell me why it costs that amount. Like, why is it that it costs eighty bucks? Is were the grapes like massaged every day? You know, like is it some rare plant that only grows like? 10 grapes a year. Like, I need some evidence besides the fact that it's good wine. Because good wine could, can come cheap, right? So You could tell me all of that. You could t- tell me that it was grown in the mountains of, I don't know. <laughs> Vidonia, that I'm sounds like a mountain that grows, with, yeah. grows grapes. <laughs> and I'd be like, okay, cool. Or I can get a barefoot bottle for, you know, mm-hmm. eight bucks and have it taste very similar. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I'm open to trying new wine. Don't get me wrong, but mm-hmm. it has to be reasonably priced. So, for sure. You know. Or happy um, hour. That's a good time to buy cheap wine. Love a good happy hour. <laughs> Matt, I have a question for you. Yes, shoot. Have you ever tried grocery delivery to your house? Um, no. I I get why people love it. I get why people do it. If I was a single mom, or if I was, you know. Too, too busy. I think I would invest more into it. But there's something that I like, especially because I go to stores like Aldi and Trader Joe's and, like, Costco. And, like, sometimes you have to go and see the deals and see the different things. And, like, Aldi's has, like, that whole random, like, mystery section that, like, I don't know. Do they have it online? I know Aldi's does the delivery, but I don't know. There's there's a part of it that I I like being there. But tell me, what about you? Are you getting your groceries delivered now? So, yes, I started grocery delivery. I downloaded an app in the middle of the pandemic, beginning of the pandemic, like last summer. I don't really know if that's the middle or if we're in the middle right now. I don't know how pandemic time works. Mm -hmm. Um, But, yeah, so I downloaded a grocery delivery app. And I don't mean this lightly when I say it changed my life. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. (laughs) It it was very nice getting things delivered to me in the height mm-hmm. of the pandemic when it wasn't super safe to go outside if you didn't need to. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so when I needed some things from the store, it was great to be able to have that delivered to me and to feel mm-hmm. like I'm helping someone else out because it's it's like, you know, delivery, like you tip them. Yeah. So I felt like, okay, someone else is putting their life Uh, like in danger going to the store while I stay Mm -hmm. home, but I'm able to tip somebody because I'm not going to restaurants right now. I'm not, you know, tipping like I normally do other places. So that Mm -hmm. felt great. Um, And I've just kind of kept it going. Like I still go to the store for like fruits and veggies and fresh produce and stuff that Mm -hmm. I need, but I love grocery delivery, (laughs) except, except I usually order it around the same time, Mm -hmm. and I've had the same shopper multiple times, Mm -hmm. and I've kind of realized um, that they're probably judging me very hardcore. Why would they be judging you? What are you getting? (laughs) (laughs) Nothing out of the ordinary, but you know when you buy a couple things from the store and you go up to the cash register and you're like, oh, they're definitely thinking something about what I'm purchasing. And that's why I love self-checkout. There is no shame with the self-checkout. The only shame is from me, and that's fine. And the camera (laughs) that's, like, watching you, and it shows you exactly how you look in your mask and your little hoodie, and you're like, I love this. 
I always like give a smile to the camera as if the camera's like a security guard to be like, no, nothing bad over here, good sir. Not like, stealing. Not stealing. <laughs> but I've, I've had the same shoppers over and over and over again, mm-hmm. and they're seeing what I'm ordering, and they probably know who I am by my name, and you know, because they know where I live and they mm-hmm. know where they're delivering to. <laughs> and I just, maybe I'm thinking too much into this, but. I definitely think that every time I order, they're yeah. judging me for getting, you know, Doritos, uh, Pringles, mm, a box of think, tissues. I don't <laughs> think those are judgeable things, though. I mean, if you were like, okay, if let's say you have the same person every week, and every week you were buying like six gallons of ice cream, they might be like, that's a lot of ice cream, but okay. maybe it's a family? Like, what's going on? But like, I don't know, like Doritos and chips and tissues seems pretty like innocent right like are they gonna really judge you for that well that's just you know one order and then the order next week is the six gallons of ice cream and- <laughs> <laughs> i'll take 20 bottles of merlot and six gallons of ice cream you know just like the biggest like depressing yeah, exactly. i broke up with my boyfriend kind of list so that's funny no i i, honestly, I would get i, I get that though ever... oh go ahead sorry girl. I no, think that I'm on a delay or something. I think there's something wrong with my Wi-Fi. I'm so sorry. If this sounds awful. You're like, wah, wah, wah. <laughs> um, no, what I was going to say was like, oh, what was I going to say? Sorry, your delay. Oh, just like the idea of like, you know, when I order even on like Amazon or something, you know, like mm-hmm. sometimes I'm like, oh, I feel a little weird about what I'm ordering. So even though like even there, there's no like actual like person i will like there's yeah. people who are getting me you know the the package but but the people know. who are like delivering it to you and know where you live it's just a box mm-hmm. for them you know yeah mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. typically um but yeah pandemic crazy times Oof. i Oof, yeah just the thought that we're like spending our second holiday season in the pan like with covid and the pandemic and everything going on mm-hmm. it's just ugh. It's insane. Yeah. And I mean, what's so sad is like, honestly, like we don't even know, like we could be the, this, it could be just as bad next year, mm-hmm. you know, like it doesn't seem like it's really dying down. It seems like there's mutations and I don't know. I don't want to be negative Nancy, but part of me is like, Oh my God, how long will this go? Yeah. You know, I, do you think that people are going to, well, I mean, people are still working from home right now, you know, mm-hmm. it, I was going to say, do you think people are going to start going back home? But I, a lot of offices kind of transition to staying home. Oh, yeah. And there's, like, giant companies that are now all remote. Mm-hmm. Like, Giant Eagle is all remote as a company. That's a big company to have, like, be remote. But I think it just makes sense. I mean, like, they did even a survey, too. Like, people are like, I'll take a pay cut if it means getting to stay home. And like, even right now, like there's something tempting about like, Ooh, can I just do a job from like home? And like, for me, like I wouldn't just do it at home. I'd be like going to the coffee shops and like, you know, maybe doing trips and doing work, you know, wherever I'm at. Like, I I just think that like a lot of jobs can be done remotely now. So I don't know. Maybe we're in a field where maybe that's harder. I don't know, but I mean, with zoom, anything is possible, you know, I think so. So, but there's some people that I think like the idea of going somewhere for work, Mm -hmm. like having that physical place be where I'm going to work and do my thing. Uh, For me, I can work from anywhere. So, (laughs) see, I'm definitely an in person kind of person. I worked home Mm -hmm. uh, for a little bit, I hated it. Um, It was miserable. (laughs) I hate being by myself. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm a very talkative person. Like, I am an extrovert. I get my energy from people. So just staying in one room by myself all day, even though I was, you know, on Zoom talking with my coworkers, it wasn't the same for me. And it just, I Mm -hmm. absolutely hated it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it it depends on your personality. But I don't know. For me, I, I, I definitely like the flexibility. I like being in charge of my own schedule. So those parts to me... Um, that's what's alluring about it. But I think some people, they like the regiment. They like a structure. But mm-hmm. I kind of like a structureless system a little bit. You know, not like chaos, but, yeah, you know. Totally so. makes sense. Um, 
and Zoom. How do you feel about Zoom? So I actually put this on my list. I love Zoom. I think it's really changed not only how we think about the workplace, but like partially our lives. You know, like I think before Zoom, I didn't really know how to like necessarily execute certain creative projects that I wanted to do. So that's what's really exciting for me is just like the possibility. Like I, you know, I do a show called Pop It Now and that's done through Zoom. And even right now we're on Zoom and it's really kind of, I don't know, I think really been beneficial for me. I know some people get like frustrated with like, oh, Zoom and technology and blah, blah, but like, I don't know. I like it. I don't know about what you, if, if you have a love hate relationship with Zoom. I mean, I definitely see the perks of it for sure. Um, having meetings over Zoom, mm. oh, total game changer. I don't see the need for in person meetings necessarily anymore when Zoom is a viable option. It's right here, it's mm-hmm. easy, people can be comfortable. It's, it's great. Mm-hmm. Um, I loved slash hate it um <laughs> like the start of the pandemic literally like middle of march when mm-hmm. everyone was like oh we should have zoom parties so people that you haven't talked to <laughs> in like four years were like let's hang out on zoom let's chat let's you know mm-hmm. uh I don't know if you went to any Zoom parties, but that was... Yeah, I had a few, and I, I actually liked it because it, it forced me to, like... Not forced me. Forced sounds like I was, like, held by gunpoint to be in a Zoom party. <laughs> but um, it made me, you know, like, oh, I could reconnect with people who, like, I otherwise w- wasn't really reconnecting with, you know? Like, that. there mm-hmm. was... That part I really liked. I liked that it got me to see people who I wasn't seeing in the first place because they live in Philadelphia, and now we can kind of come together. Um, the only issue and i don't know if this is like an issue is that like the 40 minute time limit Mm, don't love that (laughs) but i get that they're trying to make they're trying to make money i get it but you know part of me is just like i'd rather have like an ad or two or i don't know i'd rather have to like on the sidebar of my zoom meeting it's like sponsored by crackers or i don't know (laughs) sponsored by hello (laughs) fresh like yeah something like that yeah because 40 minutes it's I mean, it, it is really nice when you are in meetings and mm-hmm. they need to end um, mm-hmm. because you only have those 40 minutes and they're not keeping you for hours and hours. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, for personal use, it, it's it's nice to have more time. It, it stinks mm-hmm. that you have to pay to get that time, honestly. Yeah. And I'm cheap, as as we talked about with the wine. So for me, I am not going to be paying. <laughs> I'll, like, do two. I'll send two different links. I don't care. We'll, like, take a break, and we'll come back on a new Zoom link. Like, I'm yeah. not going to. And just stitch them together budget. if you have to, if you're sending a video to someone. I don't, mm-hmm. You know, there's easy mm-hmm. ways, for sure. Yeah. But, oh, man. Pandemic. I just, I like, I just, I feel like we're going to watch this back in, like, a year five years and just be like, wow, remember, remember that time. <laughs> Hopefully well, we're still and they, the pandemic. And they say like, this is like a once in a lifetime thing. So like fingers crossed, like we'll be dead by the time this becomes like a, there's another pandemic, right? Like that's like kind of the worry or not the worry I should say, but the, uh, the hope. So I, I, you hope so. You we'll, know, we'll see. I mean, hopefully I'm not like 60 and then this is like part two. Cause that would really, that was really, that would really suck. There so. are things that I do hope stick around, like um, mm-hmm. social distancing. I oh my gosh! Want yes. people to give me my space. Oh my goodness! Mm-hmm. Like in stores, or I could never imagine going to like a crowded concert venue and just being like packed in with everybody. <laughs> Mm-mm. I, you know, it's funny. I've not done a concert in so long. Like, I'm honestly, like, a little sad because I've not done it. Have, what, have you gone to a concert since, like, you know? Um, I've, I've been to – I went to a comedian. Um, oh, how was that? It was good. I mean, it was, like, seated. It was – you needed proof of vaccination or a negative COVID test within 48 mm-hmm. hours of the show. Um, so that was really, really reassuring, and it was, like, still – they encouraged mask wearing – Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, just packed in places, just all standing room, everyone everywhere. That just mm-hmm. sounds like my nightmare. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know if it, like this pandemic has made me agoraphobic or, you oh. know, but like, I just, I don't want to be 
around people in big groups, you know, like mm-hmm. ever. <laughs> no, I feel that. I mean, I think definitely I've become a little bit more conscientious, conscientious of um. <laughs> God, that was a t- that was a t- typical word. Conscientious of um, you know, groups and people. I mean, when the pandemic started, I remember like counting. Remember when they were like no more mm-hmm. than a group of ten, and I'd walk by and be like, "That's twelve. That's fourteen. That's that's sixteen and a half." I mean, like I think it was kind of ingrained for a while, but even now, like I'm like, oh, "This is too busy. I don't like that. This is too many people. I don't like that." Um, and I think I've always had a little bit of like, I don't want to say claustrophobia or agoraphobia per se but i've always been a little bit like okay i don't mind if there's like a lot of people but i want to feel safe i don't want to feel like a cog in the wheel you know so but yeah i mean i miss concerts i really would love to go to a rave i was talking to my good friend the other day about like oh i really want like a dance party i want to just go and like you know like be one of those go-go girls like woo at, at a party I'll be um, streaming from home and watching you. (laughs) Trust me, we will not be streaming that. No one needs to see that. Um, (laughs) If anything, we need like a a de-streaming. Is there like a way to anti-stream something? Like no pictures, no videos, nothing. Or we could we could do some pictures during this rave, but like I need approval before we post them because I might be like Long Island tipsy. So (laughs) gotta gotta be a little careful, but. I love it. What else? I, uh, oh, I was going to say, going off of this, one thing that I really loved was that places are actually cleaning things. Because, like, yeah. remember, like, like early on, people were like, you know, we're going to be cleaning every day. We are disinfecting things every day. And I'm like, weren't you, like, doing that before? Well, or were you even. not? Oh, like, what, yeah. <laughs> so was the disinfecting and cleaning, like, only once a week? Like, what was the exact, like, measure? Um and, like, I think there's sacrifices that come with that. Like, Planet Fitness, by the way, is no longer 24-7. It is 24-5. So weekdays, it's, like, I think Sunday through Friday night, it's open, and then they close Friday night and Saturday night. So it's, like, which is kind of crazy. Um, that has been one of, one of my biggest gripes throughout this pandemic is, Has been like, the hours? Places- Places changing their hours. And don't get me wrong. I totally get it. I totally understand it. And I wouldn't go to a business and complain that their hours are different. But as someone who works unconventional hours, mm-hmm. it's sometimes hard doing things that I need to do when stores have limited their hours or changed them. Mm-hmm. Um, one of a, a very selfish example is Starbucks used to be open until 11 p.m., and so mm. I would go before my job and mm-hmm. I would get some Starbucks, you know. Mm-hmm. Now it closes at 9 p.m. Yeah. Like multiple hours before I need to even leave the house. And so <laughs> it's just something so stupid that's just so inconveniencing. Yeah. <laughs> Which me saying this, there's so many like worse things that like people have gone through, you know. But <laughs> just. It's true. It's one of those things where like I always put in comparison where it's like you know, people who are suffering and then like there is those inconveniences though that you're like, ah, it really grinds my gears that Starbucks is closing at nine when I would like to drink yeah. my coffee at 11. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the, um, keeping up with the Kardashians quote, Kim, there are people who are dying. Seriously. Yes, but Kardashian. that's, and, I don't know. So I, and I get that. And I, there's another point I want to make, but I don't want us to jump the gun yet. Cause I do think it's really interesting, too, like, the methods of, like, people, like, the cleaning, like, the disinfectant everywhere. There was, like, there was, like, a Purell shortage and a Lysol shortage oh and a bleach shortage. Gosh. And it's just, like, kind of, it was kind of crazy for a while. I mean, I remember the... There was, the, like, the, the to- sanitizing robots that were, yeah. like, they were trying out that would just, like, spray in their sanitizer everywhere. <laughs> and one thing that I still don't understand is, like, the toilet paper shortage, like... Partially because, like, COVID is not, like, a diarrhea disease. It's not like you get COVID and you're, like, on the can for three days. So, like, who was the person that started that? Who, like, what like, what was the exact, like, oh, my God, like, we need to get toilet paper? Or is it just the fact that people were like, okay, stay home, and they're like, oh, my gosh, if I don't have 100 rolls of toilet paper, I'm like, like, no joke, Logan, I don't know if this is good or not. I don't think I've used up in the last year. I don't think I've used all of a 24-pack of toilet paper. Wow. 
Look How often you. do you go through toilet paper? Well, I, I'm just curious. I mean, I'm like very, I'm very, <laughs> I'm over here like a peasant, like, please, Lord, give us a little toilet paper for our poo. See, I definitely fed into the whole like toilet paper shortage. Like, I'm going to go to the store. I'm going to buy it. I waited in line with everyone else when the doors opened. I rushed to the toilet paper with everybody. It was insane. Um, that was like early, or like the first couple of days of everything. Oh, yeah. I think people saw what was happening in, like, Italy, where they were, like, not even supposed to leave their houses. Mm. And I think people were thinking that was going to come here, that it was going to be, like, okay. a complete shutdown, is what I, I would assume. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, because I don't think it's, like, the amount of toilet paper people think uh, thought that they were going to use. It was just the mm. opportunities to leave the house to get more if they needed it. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, worst comes to worse. Uh, you know, paper towels, tissues, like, those are all usable for toilet paper. We, we didn't need to be doing that. Well, that's what's, what's so funny. It's just like, I, I don't know. It's so, isn't it, doesn't it feel like random to you? It feels so random to me. Like, like mm-hmm. why the toilet paper? But I, I guess there's a, a reason for everything, so. I guess so. Hmm. Um, but one thing that I, I think I, I especially, um, I almost said the word love, which is not accurate. Um, Well, I guess I do love this. I do love how I think COVID and um, just a lot of, it's really created this giant like labor movement Mm -hmm. with workers' rights and people saying, okay, I'm not being paid a fair fair wage. We're going to ask for more money. We're going to, you know, protest. We're going to stop working. I'm going to get a better job. I get the, like the price point I want. You know, I read one article talking about how this might be the biggest labor movement since the Middle Ages, because if you remember, the Black Plague killed about one third of Europe, and this was a what happened was there was not enough workers, and so workers actually like kind of gained, you know, they were actually coveted and prized a bit better. So I think we're kind of in not necessarily that much of a drastic situation, but you know, you have two about two three million Americans who retired earlier than expected. You have people who passed away from COVID who had jobs. Not everyone who passed away from COVID probably had a job, but still, some definitely did. Mm-hmm. And another thing to consider, too, it are the people who got COVID and have had long-term problems. And so they're out of the workforce. Um, and then you have people who are like, it's just not the, ch- the cost of child care. They're mm-hmm. staying home with the kids. So that kind of has lended itself to a position where... Um, I don't know how you feel about this. I, I think just people are, they're, they're fed up. They're not get they are over it. You know, they're walking out. And I love that. I think especially these large corporations, I've always felt like, you know, small businesses, it might be harder for them to pay a living or a more sustainable wage, but there should be some kind of like program in place with like maybe a federal government or, you know, something in place where like, okay, we can help local businesses pay fair wages if they're hiring employees. Um, but in terms of these corporations that make billions a year and still, and I'm looking at you rhymes with tall Mart, still <laughs> pay their employees 11, $12 an hour, still in part of the training to work at tall Mart, you get the food stamps and you're told here's the government assistance programs. No, 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 mm-hmm. no, 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 no. So, um, that I'm glad I am really glad that. Um, a lot of people are saying enough is enough and I think it's really creating and then the delivery this year the delivery they're saying like oh things won't get delivered on time and what will I where will I be without my two-day package from Amazon and I think it's a great wake up for people to remember that like you know there's such a people have such distaste for um, people who are in certain jobs you know, whether it's in restaurant or retail, shipping, and how important these people are. Um, I think this pandemic and currently with this labor crisis, it's really shining a light on, well, this person does really important work and they should be paid and they should have benefits and they should be treated with respect and with kindness. So, sorry, that's my rant. (laughs) It sucks that we're not there yet, though. Like, it sucks that it's still a conversation that's had and we're facing a a labor shortage like places need to hire people and Mm -hmm. people don't want to apply because they're not getting livable wages they're not getting what they need 
And, and so, I don't blame them for that. And I don't blame people who are on unemployment making more unemployment than they are making minimum wage. That's a problem. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, doesn't that say, ooh, like if our unemployment, we're measuring that this is what it costs for you to survive on a monthly basis and you make less on minimum wage. Like, that blows my mind that, that that's a thing that could be, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Oh, yeah, crazy. because I mean, why would you work? Like, over eight hours, typically. It's not just an eight-hour shift for a minimum wage job, typically. Yeah. Um, Like, have to also find child care. Also have to do X, Y, Z. Probably not get, uh, get any insurance or anything. Mm. And make less money. It just... Mm-hmm. It's, it's insane right now. And I hope that there's a solution soon. And I hope that Talmart gets their stuff together. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And um, like these re- like restaurant workers too, it's they're not getting paid what they should, and they mm-hmm. were the ones who them like frontline workers, healthcare workers, like they were getting the brunt of everything, you know, mm-hmm. the start of the pandemic, and just mm-hmm. it's not fair. I know it. I I get so upset on some of these kind of things. <laughs> it just makes me like. I don't know, man. Like, we are the richest country in the world, hands down. And yet, for being one of those rich countries, we really are so behind. And so many people are in poverty. One in five kids in America are hungry right now. And it's like, we have the money. We have the resources. This you know, you have people. PSA. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it started with COVID, but it just me just we ranted about the world. society. We are the oh, children. The children. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, I, I, I should stop. I just, these topics are very, like, social issues. I mean, I studied so- sociology. I mm-hmm. Social issues to me are so important. So, um, yeah, yeah no. any chance I can, I'll talk about it. So you take it away. I've been hogging this episode. Logan, yes. what else has happened the last year and a half that um, has changed oh, your life? Let's talk, let's talk restaurants. Yes, Like, please. food delivery, restaurants and stuff. I, along with my grocery delivery... I mm-hmm. tried, you know, doing uh, food delivery from and like takeout from places. Mm-hmm. Um, but oh, I love restaurants. Like I definitely mm-hmm. missed going to restaurants. I'm I'm willing to guess that I spend about five grand a year eating and dining out. Mm-hmm. I spend a lot, <laughs> so much. <laughs> like I think one twelfth, one th- one like it's a solid amount. Of my income goes to food, whether it's food on the go, it's restaurants, it's takeout, it's snicky snacks, it's Mm -hmm. drinks, it's more drinks, it's non-alcoholic drinks, it's tea, coffee, my coffee budget. I mean, what can I say? I love it. And so literally, like, when restaurants were putting up, like, dividers and, like, having options for safe dining and... The outside dining, how they opened up stuff, like they would block off roads and do that. Oh, my Mm -hmm. God. I loved it. I felt safe going places. (laughs) I felt good supporting, like, local businesses and everything and servers Mm -hmm. and being able to tip. It just – because I'm I'm sure lots of people were not tipping, like, their takeout orders or maybe just Mm -hmm. a little bit. P- mm-hmm. Here's a PSA: You should always be tipping for takeout. <laughs> <laughs> people are. Still we're just doing like work. we're just judging people all day. <laughs> we're like, welcome to no sleep, uh, no sleep sleepover. You're not going to sleep because we're going to just judge you for your habits. Judge you for your pandemic <laughs> habits. <laughs> I just I think you should always tip like in a restaurant. Yeah. Mm-hmm. People still make that food. People are still doing a service mm-hmm. for you. Mm-hmm. And so yeah, it just it felt so good going to restaurants again and being able to. Enjoy the ambiance <laughs> of <laughs> the restaurant world. Yeah. And do you remember your first big outing, like, through the pandemic? Not, like, big out, but, you know, like, something that's memorable-ish. Oh, man. I, I gotta mean, tell you. I mean, my memory is so bad, but I, I mean, feel like I remember. One, but... Well, you go first, then. You go first. Let me hear what yours is. <laughs> I don't even mean, like, big outing, but I just, like, I I really missed movie theaters. And oh, so yeah. I just, I, the one day I was having a bad day and I was like, you know what? 
I need to go to the movie theater. And so I bought a ticket online. And so I walked right in. I got my little popcorn. I was the only person in the theater because it was like the middle of the day. And it was just so nice and like cathartic (laughs) to just have that moment. That's nice. It was very nice. But I just remember early on in the pandemic, like I did a lot of hiking and walking, which I miss. I really got to get back on that, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Um, but otherwise, I, I feel like it was like the summer was when I finally started pushing the waters a bit. Mm-hmm. But like it wasn't until the summer. And even then, you know, I wasn't really doing anything crazy. I guess like my first crazy adventure would have been earlier in May this year, May or June. I did two trips back to back. I did Austin, North Carolina. And wow. um that felt not normal, normal, but that felt like, okay, I can, you know, like there was a little enjoyment. It was, it was nice. It was a good time. But, um, <laughs> I like how I, I'm like, I went to the movies and you're like, I went on vacation. <laughs> I'm really living large over here. <laughs> I was, uh, I'm like that go-go song vacation. All I ever wanted. Um, but no, no, no. I mean, I still feel like I haven't done anything huge. I mean, yeah, the vacations were big, but. You know, I haven't done a concert. I have not mm-hmm. gone. I think I've gone to the club, but it wasn't like a club club. It was like a everyone sit at your table club, <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> which fine. was like, wah, wah. like <laughs> I'm hoping this winter, people. like I need people to be vexed so we can dance at the club all night. That is what I need mm-hmm. from you. So that's what I need from people. Um, so, oh, yeah, God. I feel like I'm still not normal. Mm hmm. And I, you know, it's another thing too. I feel like I'm working the most I've ever worked. Really? Yeah, I'm pulling like 60, 70 hour weeks these days. Um, and it should calm down a little bit with the winter. But yeah, that's, I think, and I think next year too, you know, we saw a huge burst of activity this year because of the vaccines. People were like, summer. Mm-hmm. Um, I think next year more people will feel comfortable. So it's going to be crazier than ever. Oh, so. goodness. Insane. No Again, could, <laughs> seriously. Yeah, you're working 70 hour weeks now, but think of mm. like 90. How does that sound? 90 hour weeks? Oh, yeah. Let's oh, my God. No, no. <laughs> I, if anything, like I need to work a little bit less. Um, oh, my gosh. Yes. Because I, I want to do more me things. And you know what I miss? I miss my writing days. And I actually, early pandemic, I was able to finally have some writing days. And now these days, there's no writing days. Um, I feel like early pandemic let people tap into parts of themselves that they mm -hmm. really wanted to. Um, Mm -hmm. Like people were trying new things. And like you said, you went hiking. A lot of people are going walking every day. A lot Mm -hmm. of like, I know um, I bought a pair of roller skates along with Mm -hmm. everyone else. Everyone was roller skating. (laughs) It's just people were doing different fun things to counteract like, you know, anxieties of a pandemic and Mm. not seeing people all the time and so i think that was a really exciting time that Mm -hmm. i'm kind of upset that we lost you know because we're not again we're not out of the pandemic we're still here we're still dealing with it all and Mm -hmm. so it would be nice if people you know were still doing the things that sparked joy in the beginning Mm -hmm. yeah i think i there was you know i know a lot of people have negative experiences but it was nice to like take a light pause you know, mm-hmm. for a while, I was just going into work, and then I'd come home, and I'd create. I um, I missed working out. I think that was the biggest thing, was not having any access to a gym for the yeah. first two months. That was really hard, and and this, as soon as the gym opened, I was masked. I was masked up, and I was ready to work out. I just, and for me, it was a mental health thing. It yeah. really, it, it wasn't even about, like... Oh, I have to look like a Greek Adonis because Lord knows, <laughs> instead of a Greek Adonis, I'm like a a Swedish heifer, <laughs> Swedish heifer chef, um, <laughs> half chef. But um, it was more of just like, oh my god, like I need to, f- I I want to feel good, yeah. and like walking. You know, I'm not a runner. I hate running. I I think I'm only gonna run from Rich. bullets and <laughs> from a fire. So. <laughs> Unless you're I'm one thinking of the running two things like two free food, two, two chicken, the bar, two vodka. <laughs> <laughs> but for me, you know, like working out was a it's a, it was a mental thing, and I think some people, I think we all had, you know, when it was that last summer when things started mm-hmm. to kind of like slowly open, like we all had something that I guess made us a little selfish. 
We all yes. had an activity or we all had like a venture or we wanted to see a person and like, oh, we were going to be inside. Oh, you know, and it's like, mm-hmm. I think that was OK. I, I hate people who like try and be this altruistic, like you can't do anything. I mean, like two months. I mean, oof. Yeah. It was going a little stir crazy there. So. And I totally don't want people to think that we're downplaying, um, you know, the height of the pandemics and mm-hmm. um, trying to make light of it. I mean, we are kind of making light of it. It's it's mm-hmm. it's been a hard, literally, year and a half, mm-hmm. almost two years. <laughs> Can you believe it? Yeah. Um, and I mean, I don't know about you, but I mean, there are there have been rough things throughout that you know. You, you don't want to talk about all the time that you don't want to bring up because, you know, it, it's been a hard year and a half. Mm-hmm. So sometimes it's just nice to reflect on the happy, good, yeah. positive. <laughs> well, and I think it's 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 not it wasn't just about COVID either. I mean, early onset, you saw increases in suicide in mm-hmm. abuse situations in alcohol and abuse. And a lot of bad things were on the rise for the greater good, obviously, being of sheltering in place because of covid so there is this kind of it's not white or black right it's just there's shades of gray in there Mm -hmm. and it's like you know okay early onset right we weren't allowed to do anything but like what if someone was in an abusive household and they didn't have a place to go Mm because of covid or they're home all alone and they're tempted to you know drink again or use drugs again or there's definitely like so many that's hard to it Mm mm-hmm yeah, not to, not to like be <laughs> negative Nancy, but, Whew. you know, I don't know. I, I think I can, for me, like, there's always room for, like, okay, if you need to get out of your house because, like, you're going to drink yourself into a stupor, get out of your house. You know, mm-hmm. go sit on someone's front yard and chat safely. At least, you know, in 2020 early on. These days, you know, I think most people have become apathetic to it you know it they're just kind of over it people most not most but a lot of people are vaccinated and then those who aren't i mean i don't feel like they're gonna change that mentality and i think we've unfortunately kind of accepted it and i don't know what do you think that's a really tough question but what do you think yeah. the general public's response is right now it's... i mean because we're still technically in a pandemic mm-hmm. it's it's definitely hard um Ohio is like the tenth least vaccinated state, um, and uh, hurts. Let me guess: is Miss is Mississippi number one? (laughs) I don't know the order, but (laughs) I would not be surprised from those southern states. Um, Sorry if you're listening from Mississippi, (laughs) but how dare I (laughs) get vaccinated? I just, I... We I, lost we lost our glass maker. We lost our southern listeners all in one swoop. Oh, jeez. So. We're losing everyone. But I just, <laughs> I definitely think it's people's responsibility to keep other people safe. I yeah. still wear my mask. I still try to be smart, mostly. Um, mm. Obviously, I'm not perfect. I'm not doing everything that I could to, you know, stop the mm-hmm. spread. But but yeah. I but I like to think that I'm helping in one way or another mm-hmm. uh, to slow it mm-hmm. down. Um, once I'm eligible for a booster, I'm going to get a booster. Um, I'm, mm-hmm. I'll get a thousand boosters. The second shot made me feel terrible, but I will literally get it anytime they tell me to because I want to stop this thing and yeah I think that's my duty too and I hope 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 wish that other people felt similar mm-hmm. and just you know yeah. helped us get out of this because people mm-hmm. still are getting sick people still are you know yeah. oh big time dealing with it and it'd be cool if we were just done with it <laughs> yeah Oh, man, I'm telling you, they should have had a federal lockdown for two months, and it wouldn't have been perfect, but I feel like we would have been in a better place, you know, because... I just don't think it that... would... It's, <sighs> I don't think it's realistic. Like, I think people would protest, um, and that would, you know... it, it would, I don't think it would be possible, honestly, but... But what's so crazy is so many other countries can do it. Like, why are we being difficult? <laughs> why are we being difficult? Italy's done it multiple times. Australia's doing France it right now again. France has done it like six times. Yeah, I mean, because I don't know. I think those, this is a different podcast topic, but I think those countries have a better sense of like 
what's good for the community, whereas we mm-hmm. pride ourselves on like individuality. Yes. Um, and that's one of the dangers of individuality. You don't you don't necessarily care about your neighbor. You care about yourself. And what does yourself want? Well, you don't want to be home. You want to be partying and drinking whiskey and I don't know yeah. doing things. So that's hard. It's like Australia had like three cases and shut down again. Yeah. Could you imagine? <laughs> they were like, one, two, three. No, nope, we're not doing this again. Lock Too many. Down. Too many. Good for, good for them. Wow, we're here like, it's like the bird box meme with Sandra Bullock's eyes. Like, wait, we have a million deaths? What? We don't, we don't what? see anything. I don't oh. know. Where? I don't. What? I, what? <sighs> but yeah, oh. again. I'm just excited to look back at this in hopefully a year and just say, wow, remember that time? Remember when we went through that all? And (laughs) hopefully we're out of it. I don't want to spend a third holiday season (laughs) in a pandemic. Meanwhile, some COVID mutations like listening to this and was like, (laughs) yeah, you think you're getting next year. (laughs) Bet. It's it's miserable. I know. You have anything else you want to add on? No, and... this was a good, like, it was a good reflection of sorts. I feel kind of bad because I feel like we're the TV show that came back and everyone's like, oh, I hope they don't have a COVID episode. And then we did it. <laughs> <laughs> well, just for those who want to know, this was Logan's idea. So. <laughs> don't, don't. <laughs> <laughs> who came up with this topic? Uh, Logan Molnar. You can reach her uh, <laughs> Logan Molnar at <laughs> Gmail. You can find me. I live at. <laughs> <laughs> her phone number I is thought- uh, 555. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it would be a really good reflection time. And no, I liked it. You know? I liked it. <laughs> I feel like I probably went off a little bit. On not some tangents, but I had fun. So tangents are what we're all about yeah. here. No sleep sleepover. Well, next week, I don't know about you. I think we need a fun topic. No serious uh, things next time. Yeah, yeah. The sleepover like, is getting fun. We're playing spin the bottle next week. This was like the three a.m. <laughs> conversation. Like everyone's getting a little delirious, and it's like, so, ah, ah. <laughs> do you believe in God? <laughs> you just oh go from God. there. <laughs> Wait, next you didn't week, do that at your sleepover? Next you week, do you, do you, <laughs> that has never come up in any sleepover party. That's an interesting topic. Um, You've never been to a girly girl sleepover then. Because... <laughs> girly girl sleepover, we're going to have canopy and religious talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you talk religion, then you bust out the Ouija board. Isn't that what everyone Well, does? the Ouija board, yeah, that's iconic. <laughs> I mean, who? when I think of a, a female sleepover, I think of the Ouija board for sure. So. Ugh. Ooh, hate that. All well, right. next week, we're going to be on a Ouija board. <laughs> Jesus. Over Zoom, it's a virtual Ouija board. <laughs> yeah, and then we'll have like an, an extra box of oh, whoever is talking with us, too. They're, it's, it's a group. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. uh, thank you guys for listening. Um, yeah. Really appreciate it. Hopefully, you're enjoying these. Um, I think mm-hmm. these are coming out every Monday, I want to say. Okay, I, like. you know what's funny? I was going to ask you off air, but let's talk about it with everybody. <laughs> Um, I know we said Sundays, but should we just do Mondays? I think Mondays. Because I, I wonder if people wake up Sunday and they're like, I'm not going to listen to this podcast. Like, what catches people more? Are people waking up Sunday and it's like, ooh, a new podcast, let me listen to that? Or is it Monday, like, this is going to get me through the day? I don't so know. you people vote right know. now. Call yeah. into the American Idol hotline, 216 <laughs> American Idol. Co- our live chat section comment right now and we'll read them on air <laughs> press one for sundays and press two for mondays but uh but yeah i mean let us know because yeah. i just uh, it i don't think it matters to us i think i went with mondays because like it looked better on the flyer that i made because uh, it was like mondays no sleep sleepover tuesdays is judgment day thursdays is judgment day and then the other two shows are not weekly, but they're on a weird cyclical thing. So, God, I was like, oh, it's pretty. Like, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday. Thank Bi- you for weekly. not promoting your other shows on our podcast. If, you, <laughs> if you're not aware, Judgment Day is another podcast that Matt and I do together. <laughs> well, I mean, I mentioned Judgment Day because we're both on it. I mean, it feels yeah, like it's not, not like an anti-conflict for, of no, interest. No, forget, forget your other podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you dare bring up that other podcast we do on this podcast. Right now, um, it's all about what we do. Judgment Day and No Sleep Sleepover. <laughs> yeah. People like Judgment Day. People are tuned in. I'm glad. I, I love judging people uh, via Reddit posts. So if you oh, if you feel like you can relate, join us. We have a good time. So And hopefully you like these two. Again, um, you can follow us on our 
personal Twitters, I'm at Logan Molnar. Matt, I'm at the... Reebstar, H-R-I-B-S-T-A-R. You can listen to this on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, mm-hmm. wherever you get your podcasts, or Amazon Podcast. I think Pandora, YouTube, Stitcher, TuneIn app, um, couple oh others goodness. that I can't name because I think would be a conflict of interest with my workplace. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but if you are listening on YouTube, you can. You're also watching our video, which is very exciting. Hey, yeah, yeah. Um, that's under the Starvolt Studios page, mm-hmm. where you can find Matt's other podcasts. Yeah, you can find a lot of content on there. Uh, we we have some things that are working. Uh, on for next year. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't even going to say anything specific. Just things were being worked on, and you're like, no, you're not working. Working. Get out of here. I'm sorry. This is not a promotion page. This is... <laughs> They're like, I had to listen to 45 minutes of a COVID special and now this? <laughs> Seriously. I'm like, This is yeah. probably like the last, like, we're probably like so behind. Like, this is like the, like, someone's like, it's November of 2021 and they're finally talking about this. Like, sorry. <laughs> you, so. We got there eventually. We did. Uh, it was it fun. just took some time. No oh, regrets. We're also on... no, regrets. Oh, no regrets. We're also on TikTok. Um, yeah. How we doing on there? Are you taking? Logan's in charge of the TikTok. So if you have any complaints for the, the TikTok, it's all Logan. I posted one video and it has over six hundred views. Wait, what? Post yeah. another one. We have three. Ep- we have like four episodes now. I know. I, I'll I'll catch up on that. Um, we have four followers though. So okay. Well, hey, I mean, you gotta and start somewhere. And you are us. <laughs> 600 views is actually really that's really nice it's not bad so follow us on tiktok too yeah. because i'll i'll start posting um more videos there yeah i want to oh I, I do follow right i feel like yeah you we're do. friends yes this <laughs> day oh so, it has nine likes too not bad isn't that exciting so that's go so check out our youtube video um and thanks again for watching and listening yeah so, all right uh, next monday yes peace out